My man Zar make tracks like this. What's going on y'all? In this video, I'm going to show you everything that I do to prep a session for mixing. So this is everything that is done before I actually start mixing. Uh, this is a song called Cash Hall uh, from an artist named J-Dog uh, that I'm about to mix. And I started a little bit here, but then I stopped because I want to do this video for it. Uh, so the first thing I want to show you is the follow tempo feature. So if you drag your WAV files into Studio One into a new session, uh, this session came from Logic drag the wave files into studio one if you do not have your session if you do not have your tempo set uh, generally it's going to your default tempo is 120 you drag the session in let's say it's the tempo is actually 85 and then you go to change the tempo you may see this happen you'll notice that events are moving into each other and that's because these events are following the tempo. So I already knew the tempo and you should know the tempo before mixing. Uh, the tempo to this is 55. So I've already had that set before I even open the session. So I don't have that problem here, but just in case that comes up, here's what you do over in the inspector, you open the inspector and you look at these tracks, they're all set to follow. So what you want to do is, is highlight all of the tracks and select don't follow. And then that way, when you move the tempo, now the events do not move because they're not following the tempo anymore. Okay, so I'm going to get my tempo back to where it was. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is just some really quick gain staging. Uh, looking at my mixer, so when you bring in a session that has a lot of synths and drums and everything from software synths, it's like native instruments, contact, things like that. It's always going to play up at zero dB. It's always going to be really hot. And when you hit play, uh, it's going to clip like this. So to prevent that, I'm going to, I still got all the tracks I had them. Let's see. Let's get everything highlighted. And I'm just going to bring them down so it's not clipping anymore. Okay, a lot better. So to move on from that, I want to start renaming. So really the point of renaming uh, things is sometimes things have an odd name. I want to be able to quickly look at the track and know what it is. Uh, like that track that was called uh, Instrument 10, that would have been no good. I would have had to rename that to something I could quickly uh, recognize. The rest of these look good. Okay, we got our, our vocal tracks are uh, labeled, which is good. Okay, hook, 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 verse. Okay, I'm good with all of that. So now I'm going to reorder the tracks, and I've kind of started to do this already, but and you could do this however you uh, prefer to. I prefer my vocals at the bottom, and I prefer my drums at the top, and then the music, and then the vocals. So I'm going to grab the kick. Let's see, snare, clap, everything I know that's uh, percussion, drums, I'm going to drag that to the top. And I always want the kick first. Kick, snare, uh, clap, let's see, hi-hats, and those percussive hits, okay. And bass, I like to have the bass after the drums, and then the music, the laser. We'll say that's uh, percussive too. Okay. Okay. So once I reorder, once I do my reordering, uh, then the next thing I'm going to do is color coding to make sure that I can easily uh, distinguish between the drums, bass, uh, vocals, and uh, music. And I know some engineers have a specific uh, colors that they go to every time. I really don't have a specific colors that I do every time, just as long as it's the same color it's it's fine with me let's, let's do red for the bass i will say generally i keep the vocals blue uh, so let's see maybe purple there and then do a let's do a light blue for the hook and 
Where's the verses? Maybe here we go. A dark blue. Okay. So now I've got everything uh, color coded, and I can quickly see what's my drums, what's my bass, and what's the music and the vocals. So now I'm going to remove the silence from the track. So if you bring in your WAV files, a lot of times you're going to have some dead air, and I like to remove those. So the first thing I do for that is grab the waveform height, where normally I mix with it uh, all the way down. So a lot of times you'll get some tracks that will, you may get a complete track that has nothing on it. I actually didn't get one uh, this session, but generally I always have a track that has nothing on it. And the way I want to confirm that there's nothing on it is take this uh, waveform height and bring it up as high as it can go. And therefore we can see if there's anything that, if there's any sound in those dead spaces, you'll know to keep it or not. Cause you don't want to cut out something that, that there's a sound there that you need. So while I have that done, I'm going to use uh, the one, three, and four keys at the top to do some quick editing. Uh, three is going to bring up my scissors, where we'll start to cut out some of this uh, dead space. Four would be your eraser. And I generally just toggle back and forth between those. And when I say already started, you can see with, with the vocals, it was already already done there a little bit. Okay. We'll leave that one. Okay. All right, so the next thing I want to do from there is everything that comes in as far as the music-wise is stereo, and I don't need stereo for everything so uh, from here I'm going to start to convert some of these stereo files that really aren't stereo into mono for example like the kick the snare these are mono sounds but because of the way that they were exported uh, they're gonna come to me as stereo so you'll notice that uh, this uh, icon here is a stereo icon and I can switch it to uh, mono so I'm gonna switch this to mono highlight the event and uh, command B to bounce and make it a mono. And I'm going to keep going down the snare, which doesn't need to be stereo. And this one too. That hi hat, that needs to be mono. Okay, so this one, we're going to take a listen to this and just make sure that it is, in fact, stereo. And a good way you can tell, we'll pull up the mixer here, a good way you can tell is to watch the meters and see if you see them moving left and right. If it's just left and right playing at the same volume at the same time, we know that it's not stereo. Okay, so that one, I'm okay with making that mono. All right, see about this one. Yeah, that can be mono as well. Okay, the bass, we know that's mono. Okay, grand piano. This should be stereo. Okay, so we'll leave that stereo. Let's see what this is. So we can tell this one is stereo, and you can also see that it's stereo. Watch the meters and watch how the left and right move independently. And you can also hear as well that there's sound moving from left to right. So we know that this is stereo. Okay, piano, we'll leave that stereo. Let's see what this is. 
we can see that that's stereo as well. I can hear that stereo. That one is also stereo. That one is as well too. And then we're down to the vocals, which of course are all mono. I want to point out that doing the stereo to mono check uh, should be done before you cut the silence because if not, like I've already cut this, if we highlight this and let's just say I made it mono, now you're adding that silence right back to it. So I did that out of order there. So you want to check, do your stereo to mono check uh, before you cut out uh, the silence. Okay, now we're going to set markers for the song. So oh, you already have, uh, I've already set the end marker. We've got, of course, the start marker here. We're going to set markers in between. And to set a marker in Studio One, Y will set a marker. Or you can use uh, Shift Y to pull up a marker that you can type and name. Uh, so let's quickly go through and set some markers. Let's see. So we got the first verse starting here. Unmute that. Okay. In terms of dudes, I didn't overpay. Money over bitches, kind of take. Okay, let's find the first hook. I had to excuse myself to that gas. I mean, propane. Relish the day that I overcame the struggle and pain. Never to the shit, but you got it out. Bitches bobbing down and breaking that. Uh, all right, and we got the second verse. For the cash hole. Every morning I'm up and I'm at it. Yep. Time away from no man who be slacking. Right, and Bye. second hook. Third boy, I think to come up oh. with third boy. Steal life through the line. He's a burglar boy. It's for a certain boy. Straight up. Bitches bobbing down and breaking that. Bow. Okay, so I've got my, and I guess with this one here, we can just call this outro. Okay, so I've got my, got my markers made. So the last thing I'm going to do, you see that I have all of this empty space to the right, which annoys me a little bit. So I'm going to get rid of that. And the way I'm going to get rid of that is a feature called fit timeline to contents. Uh, this is if you look into your uh, key commands, let's see. There it is. Fit timeline to contents. It's option uh, Z on a Mac. So I'm going to hit that. And now I have no more uh, blank space there to the far right of my session. Everything is uh, spreaded left to right. So there's everything that I do uh, before I start working on a mix. Uh, so comment. Let me know what you think. Uh, if there's anything else that you do before you start mixing, let me know. And um, I'll get started on this mix, and I'll catch you all next time.